Sign my yearbook, 60% executive time, and boring ball. You're watching Monkey News Source. Yeah, it's the Monkey News Source. It's the greatest show in the whole wide world, and we thank you so much for watching with Gamer and Gordon. Now, here's your announcer, Arthur. Hello and welcome to another episode of Monkey News Source. Oh, do we have a phenomenal guest today. He may know a little bit about the movie Elf because his last name is Ruddy that rhymes with Buddy. Who is the Elf? Mm -hmm. Monkey News Source, go. Oh, there you go. That's the introduction. Holy cow. Thank you, Arthur. Yes, thank you, Arthur. I'm Gordon. And I'm Tamara. Thanks for watching. Thank you. We appreciate it, you know. Yes. You guys will have lots of options for your evening entertainment. <laughs> So thank you for joining us. Thank you. And how are you, Tamara? I'm wonderful. Let's just get right to the how to do's. Hi, how to do? How are you? I'm good. My phone's in the wrong place. <laughs> um, <laughs> crazy week. Crazy, crazy week. Crazy week. Yes. Lots going on. Lots. And uh, you know, I I'm not afraid to say it. I got a parking ticket today. Oh, yeah. For twenty-five dollars. What a bummer. Is that excessive? Twenty-five dollars. That's nah. a decent price. I mean, you know. I mean, versus a quarter. How long? How long were you there for? You know, I was inside doing some banking. Right. And we don't want to talk about the banking oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. Because that's just, you know, banking is boring. But, you know, somewhere in the middle of my visit, my body clock was like, oh, <laughs> oh, I bet I got a ticket. We know how to get to do it on your phone. Like, when you go in the bank, be like, all right, how much did I put on the meter? Let me put it on my phone, a timer, and then, like, five minutes before the time is up, that's when you should, the alarm should go off. It should be automatic. 45 minutes on the oh clock. Oh, my gosh. How okay. hard is that to get your banking done in under 45 minutes? But, I mean... You know what they had, You know what they did? What? They misspelled the name on the check that I was trying oh, to get, no. and then I had to wait in line again. Oh, my gosh. For them to spell it correctly. They should pay your ticket and tell them that it's their fault. They were counting money the whole time on the money-making machine, and it was really loud. <laughs> and the whole time I was like, you know what? I could walk out of here with that money right now. <laughs> like, how, how, how often do people rob banks? Is that still a thing? I'm sure it happens here and there. What yeah. would have happened if I robbed the bank? Go to jail. For how long? I don't know. Gordon, let's not rob I'm banks. I'm just saying. All right, come on, Just buddy. saying. I don't want to So, you know, we're jail. not going to rob any banks. But you know what we are going to do? You know what we are going to do? What are we going to do? We're, we're going to get right to our guest tonight. Ah. We've got a good guest. Yes. And lots of stuff to talk about. The Super Bowl happened this week. We're going to talk about that. Yes. So, let's, let's first... Um, Let's go ahead and uh, bring out our guest. Keith, if you could please run the, run the package. package. Our guest tonight is a creator and director of Gravid Water, which has been running at the Upright Citizen Brigade Theater in New York and LA since 2004, and Stolen House at the Barrow Street Theater. He is also a writer, improviser, and actor. He works as a story instructor for The Moth, the Peabody award-winning storytelling organization as well. Please welcome to Monkey News Source, Stephen Ruddy. Yeah. Hey now, hey now, Yay. Stephen Ruddy. Hello, hello. It's an honor, an honor to be here. I love it's those a, pictures. It's an honor to have you. <laughs> it's those those are great got. pictures, Steve. Those you know, you pictures. search the internet, <laughs> and that's what you come up with these days. Those are great. Those are amazing. Was that a picture of you and Chevy Chase? Yeah. That was me. That was me and Chevy Chase. We did a we did a show together, and uh, that was it. That was, was that was from Gravid <laughs> Water? That was from Gravid Water. Yes, he was our he was our guest in Gravid Water. It hmm. was. Uh, was a few years ago. Or was it like a wax museum and you were just kidding, right? No, no, that was really him. <laughs> and That's amazing. Nice guy. I hear lots of things about the Chevy Chase. Yes, I'm going to say yes, but here's the thing. So first of all, I lived in Chevy Chase, Maryland growing up, so oh. that oh. had special meaning. Did uh, he like knowing that? Uh, no, he was, uh, he, he uh, I think he's heard it before. Uh, he, was a, he was an interesting <laughs> guest. He was an interesting guest. He was very, uh, uh, he was very charming and nice to everyone, but he, uh, He's been doing comedy for a long, long time, so he, uh... Wait, figure out what you're looking at. <laughs> he Sorry, you said what you're looking at. <laughs> what are you looking what at? It's, it's, there's a mirror over there. <laughs> sorry. And I wanted to... I'm sorry. So no, no, it's wonderful. Oh, no. Keep going. No, no, that's it. So, uh, uh, anyway, uh, so no, he, 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 was a, he, was a, he was very charming and very nice, but I feel he's done very, very many shows. He was oh, all yeah. business. He went in, he went out. There was no listening. Good. There was no talking. It was no, just, no uh, kidding. It was just, uh, he got up on stage, delivered, did his thing, in and out, a pro, professional. Very a pro, pro, a real pro. Professional. Well, I don't, don't want to jump the gun yeah. and get to our interviews, because I, I do want to I do yes. want to know your guest opinions mm -hmm. on some of the hot topics, hot topics. Yes. of what's happening this week. And I, I guess the biggest one, we, we you know, we shoot on a Tuesday, yeah. and we yes. air on a Friday. So I, I, I think this is the kind of news that might just last all week, because it is a yes. big rage. Right. Yes. Did you guys see the Super Bowl? Super Bowl. Did everyone see it? I saw did the Super Bowl. Did you guys see the Super Bowl? I did. Yes. I saw the Super Bowl. Did, I liked did, it. Do you have any it. skin in the game, as they say? 
Like some cash flow? No, like did you care who oh, won? skin in the game. I like, meant like money team, brackets. Was your team playing? Anyone care about the Rams? No. I wanted, no. The, I wanted the Patriots to lose. Yes, I also oh, wanted the Patriots to lose. We all did, right? But Everybody is that hate did. culture? Is that hate oh, culture? Oh, I think I just want the underdog to yeah, win, I think right? That's, I think that's They're I think like that's they're so fair. popular that everyone's like, you know what? I don't want them to win. <laughs> yeah, I feel No they, matter what. They've had enough success. There's times that you have to share share the share the wealth. Share right, the wealth. you got you got to give it to somebody and it else. Out. And it was notoriously a horrible game. Yeah. Super boring, not like terribly entertaining. Super bowling, get it? Boring, super, super boring. Super bowling. Super boring. Did anyone watch the puppy? The puppy bowls are a thing still, the puppy bowl? I flipped it once and I saw no, it. I some puppies, a little, little bit puppy. of puppy There's action. controversy there too. Yeah. One what? of the puppies pooped on the field. <laughs> really? Which is, you know, a penalty. It's a penalty. I guess, in, yeah. In terms of puppy pool. <laughs> but the big news, the big news was Adam Levine oh, yeah. and the, the Maroon Five. And his awesome shirt. Hey, that there he, was he is. Not wearing at Let's some just point. take a look at that. Okay. That is a lot of tattoos. He, he, you know, it's like, all right, I saw some guy uh, do a funny re re rebuttal and put like his ta hometown on his stomach with like a regular pen or something. <laughs> it was funny. What, Illinois, what did he write? Yeah, I, <laughs> or like, I saw it's that. a big it town. Illinois. Yeah, yeah. See, look at the back. The back's very art artistic. But I guess here's the question, all right? If you have a body like that, can we go back to the front again? Keep. Can we not go back to the front? If you have again? a body like that, you should take your shirt no, off at the Super Bowl. No, keep your clothes on. Right? No, he was not even entertaining. He was just standing there, staring like a zombie. And he's like, "All right, I, I'm not moving around so much." He's not like JT. See, I'm JT surprised. JT was doing a lot. JT does. He works for the show. He makes everybody entertained. I think Adam Levine. Was, can we cut away from Adam Levine? For well, a let's let's go to the pillow one. Oh, oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> so that pillow is one of the. Best-selling pillows at Target. <gasps> oh my God! And now they're they're selling out online. Yes. <laughs> because everyone wants a pillow. Adam Levine pillow. I'm, I'm, I, the thing is, is that. Do you know he has a he has a line of clothing in Kmart right now? No of joke. That he has stuff? A, no, he has a line of clothing in Kmart. He needs to rethink and add that pillow to his addition and his, his See, line. Here's the thing. I'm a little surprised at myself. I got to be honest. Right, For some reason, I feel away. like I'm defending. Him. <laughs> I can't take looking at that pillow. I'm I feel like I'm defending him because if you work out that hard. <laughs> Yeah. You know? well, it's not easy to have like a six pack. You know Trust me, I know. Okay. Can we you just know? talk I about can we just talk about some skin? Like, what ha what, what were you going to say, Arthur, about the sk some skin? No, I was just going to say, normally the way you get that body is not so much working out, but just having a good diet. I hear it's all in the nutrition. Oh. Right, right. So, you know, good for him. You know, that takes a lot of discipline. So, Adam Levine doesn't But there's eat a candy big thing because he right? showed his nipple. Oh, and, you yeah, know, remember my Janet girl Janet? Janet Jackson thing. Mm. Janet Jackson ruined her whole darn career. She showed nipple. Miss Jackson, if you're nasty. And it was not an accident because she had a nipple ring pre put in. Like, you don't go, oops, and then there's a ring. That was no accident. Was no you accident. don't wear a nipple ring like that, Janet. She's trying to call. Let me take you guys back. What's that called? Some, like, controversy and, yeah. We got a lot of show, so let's get to the next topic. Tonight. Tonight. My favorite person on the planet Earth, Donald Trump. Donald Day Trump will be giving, or, or by the time this airs, has already given his State of the Union address. Oh, yeah. And since we're air, since we taped before the State of the Union tonight, the question of the day is: Is Trump going to declare a national emergency for his wall at the speech tonight? Let's see. Do you think so? Yes. You really think so? I think he will. I think that will happen. Tonight. Straight up, in the first like two minutes, he's gonna be like everything doom and gloom. I'm the greatest, and also the wall. State of emergency. <laughs> I yes. just called it. Yes, that's it. I'm, and I'm, then I'm, what do you think Pelosi's going to do? Throw up on herself right in front of the whole entire world? <laughs> She's going to be like, whoa! And then everybody does it like in Goonies when everybody throws up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what is that, Goonies? Oh, it's a pie-eating contest? No, stand by yeah. me. Stand, stand by, by me. me. Stand, stand by me. They might have the stand by me ending today stand by in me. the House of Congress. Could you imagine if... Trump said something tonight, and Nancy Pelosi just can't hold her tongue, and all of a sudden she's like, "Liar!" <laughs> and then like bats fall out, fly out of her mouth. <laughs> she's or... like, "Whoa, <laughs> bats! What the hell are we talking about?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about my perfect fantasy, Arthur. Where Donald did Trump... you plan for this show at all? <laughs> yes. Well, did you, you know... literally? Did you write this on the way here? Yes, we're playing it a little loose. But all I'm right. Just gonna say all right. It. I think enough. he might call it tonight too, which I think is going to be a big, yeah. big problem. Constitutional crisis, Constitutional crisis at the border. Are we talking about the designated survivor? Sure. Yes. All right. <laughs> get your go bag because it's go time. Yes. All right. So you know what? Let's just get right to it. Celebrity yes. interview. Yes. Steve yes. Ruddy. Yes. You're our guest today. Thank you. So Thank let's you. get into what's going on with you. I just have to adjust my chair. Oh, you're you okay, Gordon? No. Yeah, just I'm a little low down. Okay. He does this chair thing every week. <laughs> <laughs> well, they need to buy another chair in the studio. Come on now. Yeah. Okay. So where are my interview questions? I uh. 
you have the, do you have the questions? I have the questions. I, do, I really do. Are we still, are we on the air? <laughs> not anymore. Not, not, no. Okay, so Steve, so Steve. Okay. So Steve is yes. what we like in the business as a triple threat. He's got the writing. Writing. Right? Dancing. He's got the acting. Acting. The ballet dancing. Do you really? No. no. Okay. <laughs> I think that's cool. Okay. I don't care about that. Um, fine. And the improvising. And, you know, and you've been doing a lot of writing lately as yes, well. Yes, that's right. That's right. So, you know, I, I, I just, th there's so many different things to go on. But, you know, yes. we've known Steve for quite some time. A long time. Yes. Been, been a friend of the Monkey News Source for a while. Like, so, a long um, time. you know, we knew you back in the day mm -hmm. when you were running around New York City. Yes. With yes. a million different odd jobs. That's right. So, uh, if, if you had to name one, what do you think is the oddest job? The oddest that job. That you've had to endure in your struggles as a performer in New York City? Uh, I drove a pedicab. For about three years. That's the bicycle. Bicycle. It's a giant tricycle with a bench in the back for passengers, and you basically act, uh, function as a taxi. I was a bicycle taxi for about three years. I owned my own taxi. You did? I did. Yeah, oh, I yeah he owned that. it. Yeah. And well, you had a garage. You had to keep it at yeah, right. I it was just that. a tricycle. It wasn't. It's not. Uh, <laughs> um, but but yes, it was. Uh, um, I actually still own it, but I don't know where it is. Did you, I was going to say, oh, did you eventually wow. sell it? Well, we, we gave it to a guy, a friend of ours who ran a garage, and he would rent it out for us, and then we sort of uh, lost touch with did it. Did he have a crazy, I, I just picture everybody in that business being called, like, Crazy Pete, or like, <sighs> Dougie, Dougie Downtown. <laughs> Dougie Downtown. Where'd you, where'd you leave the bike? Oh, I gave it to Dougie Downtown. No, he didn't, I, I'm trying, I can't even remember the guy we gave the bike to. Um, this is, this is not good business practice, but it was, uh, but no, it, it, it was, it was, uh, we, we got out of the business and it's like, what was his name? That's a good question. And we were talking about, about this pre-show. Pre-show. Yes. I was under the impression that at one point you dressed up like a bunny rabbit. No. And you rode your bike around, that but was that was guy, not That was a guy you. named Rowie. Rowie, Rowie, what's his name? Rowie. Yeah, some it other does, guy. It does ring a bell. It, uh, and there were definitely people who dressed up. Well, up to pedicab, I just did it in my regular, in my regular clothes. Oh, okay. It was like the tattoo thing to me. Like it was outlandish <laughs> enough to be a pedicab driver. I didn't right. need to gild it with, uh, right. with anything. Else, and not, so. not a lot of hills in the city at the time. Uh, there's very few hills, but I know where all of them are. Um, there's a sort of a large hill in Central Park. That was a common route. There's a big hill on Second Avenue. But yes, it's uh, the city is very flat. But it's you know flat. what though? It's, you know he has done all these great odd jobs, but you know. He runs this really great show called Gravid Water. Uh -huh, yes. And I want to hear about that. So that's your marquee. I can't wait. My marquee. That's my your marquee claim, to fame, claim to fame these days. Claim to fame these days. The last thing I'll say before we move on to the Gravid Water uh, on the Super Bowl theme, I did uh, give a ride to Dan Marino, and oh NFL star Dan Marino. Oh, really? Yeah, that was, uh, did you talk to like him? Drop, up? But, or was it just uh, like. <laughs> I did chat him up. He was very uncomfortable. Uh, it makes you very visible. He didn't count on being so visible. Yeah, because uh, you're moving kind of. He I literally mean, you're a fast guy, but still oh, super fast. He literally couldn't get a cab, and he got it, and then he found himself the center of attention. It was like oh, it, it's crazy. like a parade float, and uh, right. he, he was like, "Oh, it's And then you were uh, like, yeah. "Hey!" But he was very pleasant and very nice. That's awesome. Yeah, so. <laughs> were you like, and "Hey, don't worry, like, don't worry, Mr. Marino. This happened to Dougie Downtown as well." <laughs> <laughs> I was like Dougie Downtown. Yes, that's uh, Dougie Downtown. <laughs> He's where I get all my heroin from. All right, so you know. Yes. So tell us yeah, about Gravity Water. Tell us about, about the, the okay. origin story. The origin story. So, and, and what it is has it grown to become today? Okay. So um, um, Gravity Water. I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you directly, yeah. Gordon. Yeah. Uh, yeah, go ahead. So it's a show we do at the Upright Citizens Brigade Theater in New York. Yeah. We use actors and improvisers. It brings those two worlds together. Okay. And uh, we started doing it in 2004. Right. Uh, at the Upright Citizens Brigade Theater, and we draw amazing people from the comedy world, and we draw amazing people from the uh, acting world. So it's a great place where those two worlds can meet. And we've been doing it in New York and L.A. for, this will be the 15th year. Wow. Now, it, cool. I, I, the, the first time I saw it, because half of the performers yes. are scripted. Yeah, yes. Script. So you give them a screenplay, or, or, yes. or uh, uh, I'm sorry, um, what do they call in the business? A, a scene. script. A scene. A scene, a script. A yes, script, that's a scene. It. And Words. then they memorize yes. that. <laughs> that's right. But then the other person that's right. does not memorize anything. Right. And they just improvise around. That's right. So the actors treat it like a regular scene. They're given their half of a scene and they memorize it and prepare it and they're ready to go. But instead of being paired with a scene partner, they're paired with an improviser who has no prior knowledge and the magic happens. And it's that. still okay. running because you guys, you still guys running. have to check the show. I've seen it in New York still and doing. in LA, and it's an amazing show. You guys have to go out yes. and check it out. And you it's and great. you are now cultivating. Wait, there's also great uh, celebrities that right. are I was going to say there. lots of you're yes. cultivating some A-list talent. Yeah. That's right. At this point. That's right. Um, New York. There's so many actors and comedians, and so many comedians have their roots in improv, so they love coming back and doing the show with us. And it's all the improv people, you know, Amy Poehler and Jason Sudeikis and Scott Adsit and all kinds of fun people. Yeah. And then actors. It's, uh, New York is such an acting capital. Mm -hmm. And L.A. too. So they all like, actors like being comedians for a day. So who they, who yeah. is your biggest get 
our, on the actor side? Our biggest get on the actor side. That's like a, De Niro? Like that no, kind of stuff? No, no, we have not gotten Robert De Niro. You have Rob, you reached out to Bob? Didn't you get Robin no. Williams? Because I, 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 I can Robin? get Bobby on the horn yeah, for get you. Yeah, get him on the horn. <laughs> I'll get him on the horn. Um, Did you have Robin Williams or no? Robin Williams? Bob. No. Uh, no. He no. stopped by the studio. He, he stopped used to be. By, I talked yeah. to Robin Williams about the show one time. Wow. And he was interested in doing it, I but then he would have been great. He would have been great, but Aww, it's a, he been yeah, awesome. biggest actor. They're all so great. That's we have all kinds of Tony Award winners from Broadway. We have all kinds of. Uh, I'm trying to think of the, if there's a big Robert De Niro style uh, movie name. Uh, this month coming up, we have Michael Shannon doing it. That's no, that's, yeah, that's, no that's a good one. That's he'll, he'll be, uh, Yes. So, uh, but yeah, we have all we have uh, all, uh, all kinds of all kinds of. I don't like to categorize them. They're and all, are they're you all surprised wonderful. at the? Because I was blown away by the mix. I didn't think it was going to work. So great. And then I saw it and I was like this is a g absolutely genius. Well, how did you come up with like what, what how did you come up with it? Well, I studied uh, I was an improviser first, but I studied acting at the Atlantic Theater Company and it struck me that a lot of acting theory is very similar to improv theory. It's all about human behavior is too complex to plan ahead. It's all about uh, listening and reacting, which mm -hmm. is the same thing improvisers are being taught. So mm. it occurred to me that if you put them together, it wouldn't necessarily be as disastrous as you might think. But our first show that we did it, we thought that it might be a disaster. And we were as surprised as you were that it went as smoothly as, as it did. And, and yeah. 15 years in. Now, yes. and then, now tell me what you, now, now what was the offshoot that you're doing with the Barrow Group? Because so, you're, you're taking the Barrow Street Theater. Yes. And what are you doing with that? <coughs> well, we did in Chicago, and we're doing it in New York, and we're going to do it all over soon. Uh, that We're improvising a play. We're taking an existing theater, an existing set and play and everything. On, like, and, their off night or whatever? Yeah, on their off night. We don't. Okay. We try not to do it when they're using it. And it's, uh, uh, we do it. We improvise a play. And we're not just imitating the style of a play. We tried, we spent a lot of time thinking about what makes something a play and how we can achieve that through improv. So it'll be a satisfying experience. That's awesome. And we use their lighting, we use their sets, we use everything that they have. So and that, how, how has the experiment worked so far? Is it just total smash? I mean, you're, you're expanding into other theaters now. Yeah, it's been great. It's been, it, it's a great, it's an idea. We have an all-star cast of people who do it. Um, uh, and uh, it, went, it went wonderfully and we hope to do it so great. A whole bunch more. So yeah. cool. I, I mean, it's such a cool that. idea. What was it called when you did it? Uh, Stolen House. Mm -hmm. Stolen House, it was called. Oh, uh, right. Because we're taking over. Taking and over it's the thing. Still in the and house. it's also, you guys can relate. It's, uh, you know, we're doing things. It just seems a waste to us in New York to have an empty theater. Yeah. So we thought that if there's a theater that isn't being used, it's a great opportunity to do yeah, something fun really and interesting. Cool. Uh, what a great idea. It brings yeah. attention to the show. It does. It brings improv people into traditional theater. It looks and sounds like a regular play. If we didn't tell the audience, they would never know. They would think that this was just a regular play. Really? Because it's not just people standing there being like, I don't really know what to say. Like, they're trained, awesome improvisers. The audience is going on the journey with them. Like, kind of, they don't know where they're going. That's great. I will look forward to the so that I will be the man. Yes. <laughs> yes. So how much yes. of it is is planned in terms of None. nothing? Nothing. Nothing. Uh, let me cut you off there. Um, nothing. <laughs> None of it is planned. It's all it's all improvised. But these are very skilled improvisers. So they uh, they're very good at at recognizing the dramatic elements, at listening to each other, right. and building on this. So, so yeah. no. But in terms of tech, I mean, plays do have tech, and so do you do any sort of run through or anything like that? We familiarize ourselves with the space. I work with, the, as the director, I work with the lighting person mm -hmm. and we talk about how we're going to do it. But no, and we always get ground rules from the theater because they're very anxious that we not break their props. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Makes and sense. that we not move their yes. stuff. And we uh, uh, assure them uh, with a firm handshake that we will uh, not mess anything up. Too bad that show <laughs> with the, uh, the roller skating isn't happening anymore. Starlight Express. Oh, yeah. That, that would have been favorite. crazy. Oh my God. Get a bunch be... of improvisers on roller skates and be like, go to it, people. And they're like, what? That I don't know be... how to roller skate. That, that would be. Um... <laughs> That's liability. Who, um, who calls intermission? How do you know? Is the uh, light just I do. good? Oh, I do. you do. Yeah, All right. I just look for a point. I look for a logical point. Mm. Uh, and the, the uh, performers don't know when it's coming. I don't That's know when so it's coming. Great. Arthur, we're going to go next next round. We're, we're definitely yes. going to. You and, you and, you yes. and me and Tamara, we're going to take the crew there. Um, what I, else you got? Can I just say, I would love to have Arthur introduce the show. He adds class. He adds class. He adds class to anything. He makes it feel like. Yeah. Well, you know, get to know him. But. I agree with you. <laughs> what the hell did that mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. But well, you know what, Steve? You know you're what you're currently doing, working for the moth for the UCB, right. like where you go out and you teach people That's storytelling, right. uh, you know, classes and stuff. Tell us a little yes. bit about that. So my side job, when I uh, since I retired uh, from petty I've moved on to slightly better and better. Uh, to be an artist in New York, you have to. Um, 
constantly support yourself. So I do acting and writing and all kinds of things. Yeah. But one of my most reliable those jobs... Those sound like very supporting jobs. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> He exactly. supports his I'm struggling job with other, with other awesome struggling, struggling jobs. jobs. Yeah. Other even more struggling jobs. But one of, my, one of my jobs is I work for the moth. I teach storytelling for the moth. So I go, all, cool. I go all over the world. So I've been to all over the U.S., but we go to... I've been to Zambia and Malawi and, and Australia and Norway and England. And, Jer oh, so and Jersey. And Jersey. Jersey. I have. I have actually. <laughs> I just had to say Jersey. So here, here's a question like about that. Yes. Quick follow-up. So, um, <laughs> a person in New Jersey. Yes. At a storytelling class of yours. Yes, that's right. How's that different from a Malawi storytelling class? Like, is the obviously the subject matter and the worldview might be different. Yes. But in terms of like, are you finding a common thing in the classes that you teach is internationally, in regards to how people structure their stories? Tell their I'm stories. I'm sure there's more, more uh, like areas like that's difference? more depressing or sad versus happy, <coughs> or funny or. Yeah, I find I find storytelling. I actually find there to be not a, a huge amount of difference. Uh -huh. I mean, storytelling is the oldest art form. Right. I think mm -hmm. we can agree on that. Is Before that? TV. Would you, would you agree? Would you yeah, agree? Sure. I would agree. I would agree um, with that. Uh, I do feel it's universal. And I mean, sometimes there's language issues or something like that. But I, I find it's the same things. The same things that make a good story in Malawi make a good story in New Jersey. Oh, so I, I, have found, I mean, the, the experiences are, are very different. Yeah. They're drawing from very different experiences. True, true. Right. But ultimately, it's about finding those moments, those big moments in your life that had an impact on you and articulating that. I'm going to end with the most ignorant yes. question uh, ever. Yes. Is Malawi? Do they have electricity? I, I, don't, I don't know anything about what Malawi. The I don't even know where it is on the map. That's how no. ignorant I am. Well, you, he was in a lab. He was in like a test lab for a long yeah, not, time. Not Can my say, part of the world. I just don't know and anything about And he doesn't Malawi. know about it. a it's, lot of things in the world. First of all, it's shameful you've lost touch with your roots. He did. Well, you know, Jordan, it's a long story on to why. But, he was, he was a, yeah, but yes, uh, Malawi has electricity and water and things like that. It's, it's fairly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's. Uh, I mean, it, it's a. It's a. Oh, Madonna went there. Madonna. Yeah. Ma Madonna. Can we just stop for a second? <laughs> just name one country that doesn't have electricity. <laughs> now go. <laughs> go. Like best guess. The Amazon I, I forest. Think, I think parts not of a Chad. country. It's not a country. Parts of Chad <laughs> might not have electricity. Parts of Chad anyway. might not have. Do you have any idea how big Chad is? <laughs> See, I'm, yeah, I'm just oh, saying the southern so, part. You know, I have to work yeah. with these people. The southern part of Chad. It's my job. Sorry, well, Steve. Well, you know what? Oh, we're gonna have to fact check that. <laughs> we have to fact I don't check. Know. No, you don't have yes. to fact check it. <laughs> it's 2019. <laughs> Unless you're under <laughs> under the <laughs> underground or in a cave. There's right? some parts that don't like. Uh, a cave of Alaska is not, don't have cave not a country. Parts of Alaska is not a country. <laughs> <laughs> I know, okay, fine. Parts of the United States don't have electricity. Oh, dear, well, you would, we're kind of low on time, Gordon. So okay, kind of fine. Have to wrap this up. Good excuse. All right, so you know what? So so thank you, Steve Brady, for joining us today. It's an honor. It's an honor. I'm a longtime fan. It's been it's an honor to be on this. Well, thank, thank you. you for saying so, and we we, we wish you all yes. of continued success with thank all the you. shows that you're working on, thank and you. we're looking forward to seeing them. Please go check your local listings yes. and check out all the stuff Steve's talking about. And, Steve, uh, one quick question: yes. uh, Does your apartment have electricity? <laughs> uh, yes, yes, we have mm, electricity. So fascinating. Mm. You guys discuss it amongst yourself. So you know, 20, 20, we're, 20, gonna, <laughs> we're we're introducing a new segment today. We're, we're following some of the biggest trends oh, yeah. in the internet. Yes. And if you guys don't know, ASMR has become one of the biggest things going mm -hmm. on the YouTube and on the internet. Are you guys familiar? I learned about it today. Okay, yeah. we'll see. We're, we're, we're going to give it a shot. I'm going to do an authentic ASMR segment. And ASMR, by the way, stands for Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response. Right. ASMR. Right. Audio. And it's supposed to give you like a nice, chill kind of tingling sensation yeah. and relax you. However, science has now prove, proving that some people does not work at all. No. And I am one of those people. It doesn't work for me. Does not work for my ear. I hear it and it doesn't work. But we're gonna give it a shot yeah, today. We're gonna give it a shot. And since it doesn't work for me, we're, we're gonna invite our friend Grandpa to come in and he's going to participate in some ASMR. So please, stay tuned for that. Hi, well, welcome to our ASMR segment. I'm gonna eat a bag of pretzels. I'm gonna eat some celery. Wow. 
swallow after I eat the pretzel and I swallow. I'll do Lady in the Tramp. Okay. I'll get a new shower. Thank you. I'm ready for the Lady in the Tramp now. Can I try? This is ASMR. You have to really whisper it because it's sensitive to my ears if you shout. Okay. Bring the microphone closer. I want to try. Shh. Feed me a pretzel. All right. Wait, hang on. I gotta. Hang on. Hang on. Okay. Give me more. Farted on ASM before? No, oh, it's the first time for everything. Whisper, I am whispering. Are you talking loud? Am I? It's pretty loud. Sorry. I'm gonna go up the wall. I'm figuring out the freaking section. I'm gonna go up the wall. I'm going to get some water. You're disturbing the mood, Grandpa. Okay, sorry. Thanks for the pretzel. You're welcome. That is the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. It was kind of fun. No, I simply, I, after seeing that, I have no desire whatsoever to eat, to be intimate, to breathe. Well, it's gross. Can we, can we try telling like a bedtime story? Is is that part of it? It's been known to really relax people if you whisper. Well, I I could tell a bedtime story. I don't need to do it like that. Okay. Ridiculous. Oh, you know, give it a shot. All right. Tell a bedtime story. Um. Uh, hello, children. No, you have to whisper. Oh. Like um, very quiet. Hello, children. Oh, this is all right. No, it's, good, it's, good. it's it's time for your bedtime story. It's good. It's good. I feel like a stranger. I'm I'm your ASMR coach. All right. I'm, co- I'm going to coach you through it. Okay. You're great. Just give us a few of these. Like you're chewing a banana. Are we really doing this? Yeah, go, go. It's working, it's working. You're doing great. (laughs) (laughs) What the hell is this? No, 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 no. Just just go with it. You got any click noises? Do I? They love this. I love it. Like you're kicking a small horse. Donk, donk. What? Donk. You're just saying the word dog? Donk, dinkle, 
Dinkle. 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 Just whisper it. I don't. Whisper it. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm really done. Okay. You keep talking to your little microphone and oh, yeah. enjoy the little tinkle tinkle. But I'm going to go read or jump off a cliff. Okay, I, I'm going to what? save you as well. Oh, just, okay, just, fine, just come fine, here. Fine, just, fine. Just come I'll go. I'll go. All right, guys. You know we are very excited about a new feature. It is. Audience shout out time! Audience shout out! Woo-hoo. So today's shout out goes to Minnesota Twins Fan 7. Hi! So hey, Minnesota Twins Fan 7. Thanks for watching and following us. We just want to thank you we for your support. Thank you so much. For your continued awesomeness and support. And you know, uh, each week we're going to be featuring another one of our um, audience shout outs. Yes. So this is Minnesota Twin Fan 7 is our first shout out! A Monkey News Source official first one. And uh, we want to thank you. And if you guys would like a shout out from us, please follow the following rules so you guys can do that. Number one, first thing you got to do, you got to like our three social media pages, Facebook, Instagram, Uh, and YouTube. And be sure on YouTube to subscribe and click notification buttons uh, to get alerts when the new episode posts. Follow us and share one of your favorite videos on your wall or tag a friend. Or number two, and number two, you can also have... To, you also have to comment live during one of our broadcasts via YouTube on Fridays at 10 p.m. on our YouTube channel. Right around here. Uh, whatever he just put up on the screen. <laughs> so please do that, and you will get a shout-out, too. Yes. So thank you very much. Thank you and so much. And it's time, Tamara, guess what? What for? It's time for... Blagorama. Blagorama! 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 Plug-o-rama! plug Yeah, right, that's right. plug rama Steve Ruddy, what are you plugging? Come see us in Gravid Water in New York or L.A. at the Upright Citizens Brigade Theater. You can find all the information on Twitter at, at Gravid Water. That's right. And Arthur, plug rama Oh, I'm headed to England this weekend to help install their very first electrical grid. <laughs> <laughs> Tamara Pluggerama. Oh, uh, you can watch our show uh, like you are tonight, and if you happen to miss it at any time, it replays on Saturdays at two and then eight o'clock. And Pluggerama. And ahead. that's also right. You can see us on Rye TV at nine a.m., noon, three, and eight p.m. on Channel seventy six or thirty three Verizon. And I just want to say thank you, Steve Ruddy, once again for Steve joining Ruddy? us here on Monkey News Source, and from everybody here at White Plains Community Media Facility and Monkey News Source. I'm Gordon Goodall, and I'm Tamara, and that's, and that's the, the whole rack of, of banana. banana.